So I will call the meeting to order on Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021 at seven, it's now 7.01. Um, okay, item number two, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance pledge to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. And, and to, to the republic, republic for, which it, for stands, which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice. And justice. <sighs> okay. Um, three roll call. Um, all right, Commissioner Sutherland. Um, so Dana Sutherland, 31520 Schoolcraft, Fraser, Michigan. Uh, Commissioner Cook. Um, Fraser, Michigan. Commissioner Rollins. Commissioner Rollins, 31757 Eveningside, Fraser, Michigan. And Commissioner Kelly, uh, Fraser, Michigan. <laughs> um, we are missing commissioners. Hunt and Meller, but they did um, message us ahead of time to let us know they will not be here. So, um, item number four, approval of agenda for August 3rd, 2021. I make a motion to approve the agenda for August 3rd, 2021. I'll second that. A motion made by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Rollins, all in favor. Hi. All right. Uh, item number five: approval of minutes from July six, twenty twenty-one. I looked over them, so. Yeah, I looked over them. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, and I'll uh, second. Before, before oh, you yes, do go that, ahead. Uh, I noticed in the minutes um, on item number thirteen, you just had a motion made to adjourn the meeting at eight seventeen. Was that eight seventeen or was that nine o'clock? Oh, it must have been nine. So I just wanted to point that out. I oh, wasn't it was no, it was, you know what? I no, like it, it was, was eight. 17. Yep, yeah, I have, I have my notes on here. It was eight seventeen. Yeah, it was eight. Oh, okay. That was like the uh, quickest we ever had a meeting, Vince. All right, well, let's, <laughs> hope, I don't, let's hope I don't hold you up. <laughs> don't let me be the hold up. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Sutherland, seconded by Commissioner Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Um, item number six, volunteer group reports. Um, 6A, updates from Fraser First Boozer Club, McKinley, Barry Free Park. Hi, Sherry. Hi, guys. Good, good Hi. evening, Commission. How are you guys all doing? Good. good. Yo. I'm on the move here. Sorry, I'm kind of somewhere. I had to be somewhere, so I'm in the middle of something. But I just wanted to give you guys an update of everything that's going on right now. Of course, with COVID still, things are kind of quiet still for Fraser First Booster Club. Um, the things that we did have going on in the last month is we did the tires for a purpose. So we did that at McKinley. That was with five other, um, I'm sorry, four other Macomb County charities. We had MCRES. Um, good, the Fraser Goodfellows, we had, um, Good Shepherds Coalition and we had Turning Point, which are all big, huge, um, Macomb County charities. They were all involved. Um, what we did is we had people vote and they could donate money and whoever had the most donations, um, won, a, like we get like a little plaque and stuff. So the good thing is Fraser first came in second out of all those big, huge, um, charities, which is amazing. Um, M Crest came in first, which I'm so happy for because that is a great charity. They deserve every dollar they got. So that was a great thing. Um, and then now the tires are all gone. So that's over with. Um, but you know what? The community really took really good care of it all, right? No one really trashed anything. It was there, there for a month. I mean, that's a huge thing. And those things could have just walked away, right? No, so, they um, looked really good it. there. I'm sorry? It's that they looked really good. I had to take a walk up and see them. That was really nice. Yeah, yeah my kids liked it. Thanks. Um, 
I just like bringing other communities to Fraser, right? We have, our, we have a great community here. Why not bring other charities and show them exactly what we're doing here in Fraser, you know? So um, that was the whole point of this, like, tire for a purpose. Um, we were at the farmer's market last month, and we did um, painting on campuses for the kids. We had 22 kids participate, and we had about, I had about nine kids that let me keep their paintings for the fence. So we put those paintings up on the fence. So if you go there, you'll see some little tiny ones. Those are all the ones from Farmer's Market that the kids painted. Um, so that was great. I love doing those little kind of outreach things at the, you know, at the Farmer's Market with the kids. Um, especially when they're like, oh, we can just do this. It's just for us to do. And I'm like, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Um, our final phase, which is phase three of um, McKinley Park right now, we are still, <laughs> oh, I hate this, but we are still waiting for cement um work at the sensory garden for the garden um the i'm sorry the accessible raised garden beds to be put on um this was given to us you know they're doing it out of their own heart they're donating all the funds all the money to do it there's no money coming from the city no money coming from fraser first so with the rain and the heat we're pushed back again of course it was supposed to be a month ago I mean, we're on a waiting game, of course. It's a list, checkoff list, and we're a small project, so we get checked off last, of course. But um, we're hoping to get that in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then the garden beds are being put together by, um, I'm going to get this wrong because I forget all the time, but um, Women for Humanity, that's what it is. And they're coming to build them for us. Um, Vanya's um, friend Bob built a prototype so that they can go off of it. So we make sure that the things are built, you know, sturdy and and together um other than that we are just kind of finishing up phase three and the final phase of mckinley and once we are done with that we will have a huge ribbon cutting um kind of party kind of like hey look at all the you know what we did over the last time yes it took us a long time but guess what this was by a lot of volunteers right and a lot of hard um time and donations and spaghetti dinners and people in the community just coming out and volunteering so I mean I'm proud of it and I will always be proud of McKinley um and then I hope once we're done here we'll be able to move on to something even more fantastic and keep on moving forward and making Fraser better every day other than that if you guys have any questions our next meeting will be um I'm sorry we have to look at the August we don't have a meeting we always take it off for people to get ready for school with their kids and stuff like that so our next meeting will be the oh the third Tuesday of September I apologize I don't know the date offhand um but I will put stuff on enough and I'll have stuff on our Fraser First Booster Club Fraser um Facebook page also um and that one hopefully will be a face-to-face -face. I don't know the way things are going I don't know what's going to happen, but um, if not, it'll be a Zoom just like this. Um, so other than that, do you guys have any questions? I don't think so. I just wanted You're to good. say, I just wanted to say thank you for coming out to the market and doing those paintings with the kids. That was really nice. I love they it. We did, did that and they, they appreciated it. So thank you. Yeah, I love doing that kind of stuff. Like if I can be there, if I don't have something going on, I will be at all of them. I mean, I do have family and kids that are growing up and leaving me, but um, we did a, the first one, we did a rock painting, like a, a, not a rock, I'm sorry, toad houses and fairy houses. We went through 45 kits. Wow. That, that's amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. so I love doing that stuff. I love giving back to the community that way. Fraser First has always been like that. So we, no matter what, we'll always keep doing those kind of things. Yeah. Thank so, you, Sherry. You're welcome. You guys have a wonderful evening and thank you for all you guys have been doing. You guys have been doing an awesome job. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Um, item number 6B, fix the port group. Has anyone speaking with the fix the port group? Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Hi, um, Laura Lessage here, 15201 Fairview. Um, I briefly talked with Dana Frears a few minutes ago and she could not make it today. She had another obligation, but she asked me to just bring up a couple things um, for the Fort Frazier group. Um, they met with Vince and Rags and the DPW will be making some repairs that they've talking about. 
And uh, they're also going to talk further about installing a shade over the seating area. So things are kind of moving along for that group. And um, if anyone wants to reach out to offer their support and help, uh, please reach out to Dana Fears. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Um, item number seven, report on current events 7A farmer's market. All right, so another farmer's market will be upon us before we know it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the last one went really well. It definitely wasn't as busy as May or June. I think that was because it was right after um, 4th of July. So I think probably a lot of people were still out of town. Um, but we still had a good showing. I've tried to increase um, advertising of the market this time. So I've been doing a spotlight on enough every day, spotlighting a different vendor. And that seems to be, it seems to be getting a lot of good feedback from the community and a lot of participation on those posts on enough. So um, I'm excited about that. I, we actually have so many vendors for the August market. I might have to start doing more than one a day <laughs> because we had less days than vendors. So when we get a little closer, I might have to um, increase it. Right now, we have 20 vendors confirmed for the August market nice. and two food trucks. Um, we have Real Taco Express and Motor City Pasty coming. We also have Mark Ludke, I might be pronouncing that wrong, who is a Fraser resident volunteering his time to come and play music, um, do magic, and then balloon animals um, at the market as well. He volunteered and was at the bunny event too. So um, huge thank you to him for volunteering his time to come out and do that. Um, I think having the music will definitely add a different element to the market. So that'll be fun. And then we are also going to be doing a birdhouse craft. Um, and that was the idea of our volunteer, Peyton Kalka. She wanted to do something with the kids and she's been such an excellent volunteer and helping so much this year that I wanted to make sure that I could work to um, make that happen for her. So we've got to order the birdhouses, but they're in stock. So we'll be doing that birdhouse craft and Peyton's going to be doing that in the gazebo. So thank you to Peyton Kalka for that. Um, for the September market, um, I reached out to Rachel Augusti who does science in the park and she's going to be doing um, a science activity at the September market. So thank you to Rachel for doing that. Um, we are going to do the raffle, like the big raffle. We talked about that at the last commission meeting, having like the vendor raffle at the next one. So if anybody wants to help me with that, um, we don't have to solve for that right now, but you could feel free to reach out to me after this meeting. I just basically need help organizing and getting everything together and just kind of planning that raffle. Um, and then the other thing for um, September, I've been trying to diversify vendors a little bit. Um, so we act and try to get more Fraser business in there. So I reached out to Comics Corner that's at um, Masonic and Utica and Comics Corner will be coming in September to the market and they're gonna bring like 50 cent comics and stuff like that. So I thought that would be something that would be kind of cool and you know, just add, like I said, a different element to get um, different age group out to the market and have more for more people. So. That should be exciting. Um, but if anybody has any ideas for the last market in October, it's not too early to start working on that too. Um, was hoping we could try to come up with something and kind of go out with a bang um, for the October market. But if you have any ideas, I mean, I was thinking maybe petting zoo, but again, I'm just kind of thinking of things right now. So if you have anything that you um, are really passionate about or you would like to do for the October market, let me know, but right now all is well, it's busy, it's going well. Oh, and sorry, one last thing. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Hunter for all of her help. Hunter is just absolutely amazing and I cannot thank her enough for reaching out to vendors, confirming who's going to be there. She communicates with me on a consistent basis on who's coming, who won't be able to make it. Last time she put sticks in the ground so that all the vendors would know exactly where their spots were. Um, she puts the signs out. I mean, she's just absolutely fantastic. And this market would not have been as successful as it's been this year without Hunter. So huge, huge hey. shout out to <laughs> Hunter for all of your hard work. So thank you, Hunter, very much. 
Uh, any questions for Dana? Um, well, I have those uh, paint markers I need to get to you. I won't be able to make it to this market. I'll be at the next oh. two, but with me just starting at the new job, um, I'm not gonna yeah. make it, but I do have a whole tub of the paint markers for you. Okay, wonderful, thank you. I think that'll be easier than using brushes and paint on the bird. And less houses, messy, but... especially with the little <laughs> ones. I'll make yeah. my kids shake them up in advance so that <laughs> won't be an issue. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Dana. Um, 7B, walk in the park. I know Echo isn't here, but I know Chris has been to all of them. So <laughs> I have. Um, we've had roughly anywhere from four to 10 people. Two weeks ago, we had our biggest showing um, at the park behind Oak Ridge over there. We had like, I think, 10 of us that showed up and we kind of did a walk in the neighborhood and a walk around the track. Um, tomorrow or Thursday's walk is at Boris Park. We're going to meet at the library and then we're going to do our walk from the library to Boris Park, around Boris Park and probably back to the library should be close to our mile walk. So we're looking for more people to show up. So I'm hoping we get some new people, but we've had a, a couple walk and I think they're in their 90s and they've shown up to almost every one of our walks. So it's been great to listen to their stories and talk with them. Um, besides that, we have what, I think two or three more left. I think we have three more left. Uh, but yeah, come on out and join us. It's a lot of fun, you know, like, you know, we just sit and talk, we walk. We don't walk like fast paced, we kind of just stroll. But it's been a lot of fun meeting different people in the city. Awesome, thank you. Um, and might as well unmute yourself again, Chris, because we're going to end item number eight, discussion of new events, food truck rally. Okay. So our food truck rally, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight food trucks that are going to show up. They have confirmed so far. We have Real Taco Express, Motor City Sweet Treats, um, Twisted Street Barbecue, Better Up Waffle Company, um, Estes Greek Food, Street Food. The Wizards Food Truck, Barbecue Daddy, and then Sweet Treats, um, Tweets Sweet Treats with his ice cream truck too that will be there. Wow. Uh, I have a live band set up to come. I just have to look on where I can get some electricity from for them. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to look at like that little shelter area that's over there, the concession stand to see if there's something. I just found this out yesterday mm -hmm. that they needed some electrical work. So I'm gonna go look at that and see if there's some power. Does anybody know if there's power over there? I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is power at the concession stand. There's also, um, if you look at where the beer tent was uh, for the carnival, there's there's electric service over there, that, but that requires an electrician time. Uh, okay, there's stand, there are standard, there are standard 120 outlets around the gazebo. And I know that that's a pretty good distance away from where you were planning on right. having the rally, but there should be some, some outlets, you know, in the, uh, in the concession stand. Okay. I'll have to check with somebody to see about that. And I'm waiting to find out exactly how much power or what they need for that and then I can contact, I don't know, I'll contact Hunter and we can figure it out. Chris, I would recommend checking with um, uh, Ragsdale, Mr. Ragsdale or uh, Melissa and um, okay. check with them and see, they can tell you how much power it is and exactly where they're located and all that good stuff. But DPW is uh, okay. who you're, all right. Uh, and, and Chris, when you're requesting how much power is needed, uh, usually entertainers like to have way more power than they would need. And that was one of my responsibilities with all the huge events we pulled off with Art Van Furniture is I would find out what equipment they're running and what the amp draw is. And so that's, that's a very simple question. They can look at their amps and, and whatever else they're gonna power, lights and so on and so forth. Um, and that will be very helpful for Ragsdale to, to, to figure out okay. uh, exactly how much power they need. Because, I will contact them. Okay, I, I mean, we, 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 
we pulled off events where they wanted 11 20 amp circuits and <clears throat> comes down to it that all the equipment they were powering they only needed five so okay. that's that's why i'll be very helpful that'd be great now ask them what their amp draw is and what kind of equipment they need and that'd be perfect. And then the only thing I'm waiting to is for the meeting with Hunter to see if we're going to have the beer tent set up there too, uh, which would be great. Um, so I'm hoping to do that this week, maybe. Okay. Besides that, I'm just hoping it's a great day. <laughs> and it's September 18th, right? Yeah, September okay. 18th from four to eight at the back part of Stefan's um parking lot like where the soccer fields are or where the food trucks will be set up and if do i have to call do i have to ask dpw too if they can slide some picnic tables over that way i know there's a couple down there i went by i looked at it the other day there is a few i probably like a few more yeah i would say uh give them a call or or okay. hunter, can give, hunter can give them a call let us know you know how many you need or what you think you'll need and then we can um get with them and make sure they're available Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any questions? All right. Um, item number nine, over report of parks and recreation. I will turn that over to Vince. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Um, I wanted to give an update on the parks and where we are in terms of um, completing work projects and, and all those things, those activities. Uh, so first, um, on August 6th, which is this Friday, um, we're going to finish the path at Somerset and Pombo Parks. So that damaged area at Somerset, as well as the Pombo, the entire path, it's closed right now. So that's August 6th. And the reason for the multiple rescheduling and the delays is obviously the rain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's rained a lot when the ground has that excess water. You know, it's hard to, you know, you can't lay that asphalt. You can't lay it. So, um, so we're hoping, you know, we're shooting for August 6th. I got that from Mr. Ragsdale himself. Um, the other item is Stephens Park. So um, there's rots, lines in the field, um, just really an update from the carnival um, that has to be repaired from the carnival equipment and uh, heavy vehicles, that sort of thing. And, you know, with the rain, once again, the earth is moist. So uh, DPW is now working to repair that and the Lions Club will be billed for the work accordingly. Uh, the other thing is Boris Park. So you know that Boris, Harrington and Meadows were projects. Mm -hmm. um, and so Boris is 95% complete. Hunter and I drove by there the other day. We noticed kids already playing on the, um, the playground equipment. Um, now 95% complete. So the other five is, is we're waiting on bushings to install uh, at the arch of the top of the castle. So it doesn't prevent them from playing or anything, but we're waiting on those bushels. And then once that's done, you know, it'll be, you know, 100% complete, fully functional. Harrington Park, uh, the equipment has been shipped except for the decks. So the contractor has received the equipment. Uh, the decks, of course, is the, is the foundation or the base on which the, the uh, structure is erected. And um, the shipping date on those decks is August 5th through August 10th. And then construction will start immediately after that. Once we receive the decks, it'll start. So that'll be uh, next week. Actually, Perfect. we are expecting to receive those. Uh, once again, the delay in that order was the manufacturer had a fire at his facility. I may have mentioned that before, um, but that delayed the orders and the shipments. So for these projects, and that, that in part is why these projects have been delayed. And the other is, is of course, the rain. You know, it's been flooding and raining heavily and just like uh, laying asphalt or um, concrete or what have you, you can't erect structures in a soggy ground. You know, the ground has to have a certain firmness. Um, so Meadows Park is the other. And if you recall, we're doing these in alpha order. So Boris, Harrington, and then Meadows. Meadows Park, the contractor um, already started on the volleyball pit and the foundation of the pavilion. 
So now the equipment also will be shipped same date as um, Harrington's and that's August 5th through the 10th. The construction will begin following the completion of Harrington. So once Harrington's done, um, once they get that equipment and they install Harrington, they're gonna start metals after that. The pavilion ship date is September 8th and the install will begin immediately following the arrival of the pavilion. Uh, materials and equipment. So um, just a little update on the parks projects and where we're at there. Awesome. Thank you, Vince. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay. All right. Um, item number 10, other business. I'm not quite sure if there is any other business. <laughs> so I guess I do want to back up a little bit. I'm sorry if I sure. missed something but so that was a parks update is there any type of recreation update uh, any type of recreation update i would say no there's no recreation update other than what we've already discussed and if hunter has anything she wants to add um you know she can do that but other than that no recreation update okay so i I've heard from residents that there was a six to eight month plan potentially in the works for kind of reviving recreation. So is that not true or is that not your understanding at this time? Just kind of trying to see where we're at with getting any type of recreation activity going again. Well, that's a fair question. Um, and there is a plan in the works but um, the plan is not finalized. So there is no, you know, there's nothing re to report in the area of recreation. So uh, in terms of the opening, um, it's still indefinite. So I can't say, you know, when that exa exact date will be, but there is a plan in the works to um, come forth with programs, activities, and when that opening will be. I can't say at this time. And I will say that with the recent reports in the area of the Delta variant, the COVID, you know, I'm watching that closely. So um, if that spikes up again, like it did, you know, it could have an adverse impact. It could delay the opening even further. So um, I'm watching it, I'm monitoring it but the news is not good. Things are spiking up nationwide. I'm, I'm sure you all have been watching the news and you've been paying attention to it. Um, but I'm you know, reluctant to, as I've said all along, just open things up and we're going the wrong way. So right now we're going the wrong way again. I mean, even at our city hall just today, we've, we've re-implemented mask wearing again. So, um, and social distancing, you know, at our place of employment. So I'm going to monitor this thing and, um, you know, see, you know, how it shakes out. This is something we cannot control. Um, but as far as the plan, uh, yes, there's a plan. I intend on uh, presenting a plan that I'm working on this month, you know, as far as what I see for recreation and the recreation center. Um, and I'd like to present that to council in September. So this is being worked on this month, but you know, in terms of, is there any, you know, any update right now, it's not complete. And so there's really nothing to report. So when that comes out, you know, we'll have a timeline on when I see you know, I can predict, predict or project that recreation center opening, you know, how many people we will need, um, what we will need to do to get it up and running, programs that I think we will need. I know we will, I will have to come with an amended budget because I know we really don't have the funds in there uh, because the place was shuttered. So, um, so those, those are the, you know, the, the things that I will have to address and um, I will have to get approval for that 
and that'll be, um, I expect, at the September meeting. And in that meeting, that plan will have what I think is the timeline for opening up, you know, the recreation center. And I'm assuming that's what you're talking about is the recreation center. Well, um, I'm talking about, so when you say recreation center, you mean the senior activity center, right? Yes, the senior activity center. Okay. Referring to. So I mean, I mean, both the senior activity center as well as any other type of recreation activity in the city. So any other parks and recreation programs, whether they be socially distant, whether they be senior activities at the senior center, I mean, anything that we can do to open up any type of recreation activity in the city. Well, as far as um, the you know ideas that we have, I thought that that's what these meetings were. I thought that we were coming together and generating ideas with the Halloween stroll, walks in the park, the food truck rallies, those are recreational activities unless, you know, unless I am mistaken. And um, so I thought that's what we were talking about here. What, what else, what else were you looking for? Or so when I say recreation activities, I mean, programs for program. seniors or children and or children. Yeah. yeah and, that, and I outlined that I noticed you said programs for seniors. And so again, I, you know, I, tie that to the recreation, the recreation center, the senior activity center. Um, you know, that's gonna be part of that plan. So um, any ideas you have as an advisory board, you know, I welcome. And, um, you know, I look forward to it. You know, it could very well make this projection or the plan that I present, but you're welcome to, offer any suggestions that you have. Um, it's not complete, so I can't talk about it in detail now, but um, other than that, that's all I have. So as far as budget goes, there are funds available for recreation activities if the commission were to come forward with ideas and they were approved, voted on, what have you, other details that go into it there could yeah, there potentially are, be recreation funds there. Yes, there are funds in the budget and Hunter outlined that in the last meeting. Right. And I, I believe it was, I think it was outlined in the minutes as well. Yeah, I'm looking at the yep. minutes. And so those funds that are in your or July 6th, those are the funds that are available for recreational activity. So you've got that information and I'm, wel I'm welcoming and I'm open to your ideas on what part, you know, what activities you'd like to see for, for everybody. You know, I welcome that. Fantastic. I have one question, I'm sorry. Is there still, I thought in the past that there was, is there separate lines for the recreation and senior? Or no Separate lines for recreation and senior. like budget lines. No, um, what what you receive in the report from Hunter um, is what it is. So no, there's I, no. I just separate meant. Lines. Um, I just thought like in the in the past. I, I know everything's changed, but I thought there was two separate like like budget lines. One was for senior programs, and one was for recreation programs. No, I thought that was the case too. No, no, I, you know, there is uh, in the budget, um, and again, that's what Hunter um, laid out for you last meeting, but, you know, there's supplies, and there is community promotion, there is programming, there's programming farmers market, and there's programming for recreation revolving funds, and that's, that's it, there's no breakout between seniors and and others or youth or what have you that you know that's it and um there's other line items here but they're not line items for recreational items that are to be spent for recreational purposes in that sense meaning you know you're talking wages you're talking salaries you're talking i mean that's not money that you know, can be spent for an activity. It has to be for that intended purpose, if that oh, makes sense. Right. 
no, there's no, a line no. item for conferences. There's a line item for memberships. So I'm, I'm only outlining the line items that are, you know, can be spent on recreational activities. And those are them. And they're in your minutes. So. Um, Correct. No, I just thought I was mistaken because I thought in the past we had a recreation budget. It was one budget, but there were separate um, funds for senior and separate for. There, there very well could have been, Sarah, uh, but I wasn't here. So all I can do is tell you what this year's budget is. Okay. And, and there's, you know, there's no line item for, you know, segregation. Uh, the, com the community promotion um, those funds are primarily used for, say, that Lions Club Carnival. Uh, you do have programming of twelve thousand. So uh, the the twelve thousand dollars for the programming is what is used for programs, which would be those are your recreational activities. Those are what you know we have to work with okay. that are approved by council. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess uh, that kind of was other business. I'll oh, go ahead, Commissioner Cook. <clears throat> On other business, I know I mentioned a holiday stroll um, Halloween thing. I think I'm gonna back out of that because there's a lot of things that I have to do that I didn't think I would have to do. Like I have to contact the health department to pass out candy. I have to, um, know how many people are going to attend and how many people are going to participate before I can fill out the form that I have to fill out. I have to fill out a temporary use permit. Um, I have to send a letter to the city manager explaining everything. I have to draw up a map for all of that, which I have no problem doing some of it, but then I have to wait for approval. And I mean, it's kind of hard to know how many people this far out yet. Yeah, I mean, I do have 15 businesses that said that, yes, they wanted to participate in this. Um, and that was just throwing it out on onto social media and they contacted me. I haven't even gone through businesses, but I think I'm going to just back out and the people that I have, I'm going to see if they want to go ahead and um, do the Fraser first boosters trunk or treat. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Cook. Um, excuse me. Item number 11, citizen participation. Any citizens want to participate? Aha, Laura. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Hi, everybody. Laura Lessage, 15201 Fairview. Um, you cannot have a meeting without me speaking, right? <laughs> so I just want to say a couple things. Um, I know I like a broken record about not having the parade for the Lions Club Carnival that Sunday. And I believe that it's, um, you know, just a, like a stab at you to say that you missed on the opportunity of earning funds for your special events group in Parks and Rec, because in the past, we the Parks and Rec Department would have um, charged for parking in the in the park, and um, they the last time they did this in 2019, they made over $2,500, and they also had in their booth um, selling water and Gatorade, and they would make over $200 in those uh, sales. So if you went to the Lions Club Carnival, every business, including the VFW, um, charged for parking $10, and people were paying it gladly, and nobody had to pay when they walked, went into the Stephens Park area, which is a big um, miss in my, in my idea. So you think about that when it comes to next year, that would be awesome. Um, also looking back at some of the previous years, um, agendas and minutes, cause I was on Parks and Rec Commission for several years. At this point in time, people would talk about not only the Halloween events coming up, um, they would partner, Parks and Rec would partner with the Lions Club and do a um, Halloween for the kids. And also you're starting to talk about Christmas and Frasier. I mean, this is, are, are you gonna do things like that? I mean, that's only a few months away now. And if you're gonna do something, you gotta start planning ahead. So just my thoughts on, um, you know, it takes time. Yeah, I know it takes time to plan things. So this is the time to do it. Plus at this point, you all should be talking about the five-year plan. 
what you, you should be going through that document step by step at these meetings and discuss what else can be um, included or excluded or updated within that document because it, it's up at the end of this year. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All. Listen, I'm all about Christmas and Frasier since the Kellys started it. So, <laughs> um, all right, hold on, I'm backwards. Thank you, uh, Kellys. <laughs> <laughs> it was Christmas in a small town when they started it. So, <laughs> um, uh, all right, if no other citizens want to participate, um, we will move on to item number 12, commission members with concerns. Uh, Commissioner Cook, we'll start with you. Um, I do want to say that the Lions Fair was great. I went and participated in it a couple of nights. It seemed like there was a lot of people out there enjoying themselves. It was a great thing. The only other thing I'd like to bring up is um, the new Sunshine Committee in the city that has kind of formed with a few people talking about getting some things done. We are doing an outdoor movie night for free behind the VFW hall, they are going to be working with us. They're going to sell hot dogs for a dollar. They're going to sell hot dogs, chips, and a pop for two fifty, dollars and popcorn for a dollar. I did have somebody sponsor for the movie and the bus that's going to be there to set that up. So that's taken care of free. So um, come out and join us on um, Friday, August 13th, around eight o'clock, and it should be a good night. Bring your blankets and um, a blanket and some chairs and um, enjoy us and come join us. Thank you, Commissioner Cook. Um, Commissioner Rollins. I don't have anything. Okay. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Sutherland. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to the Lions Club also for the carnival. It was absolutely amazing. And full disclosure, full transparency here, even living in Fraser for 21 years of my life, I'd never been to the Fraser Carnival before. <laughs> I know wrong it just with you. never worked out, <laughs> but it was so amazing. And now I hear what all the hype is about because it was fantastic. And the Lions Club just did a fantastic job and the volunteers. And I was there the night that like the tornado came in and almost killed all of us. <laughs> And people were like slip and sliding in the grass. And I mean, it was just so much fun. And you could see people just out really enjoying themselves. So thank you so much to the Lions Club. Um, I want to say thank you again to Fraser First Booster Club for coming out to the last farmer's market and doing those paintings. It was really amazing. And um, the work that they're doing with all the canvases on the fence. So if anybody, when you come out to the farmer's market, make sure you take a chance to, or take the time to stop and look at those paintings. I believe that we just crossed the 100 painting threshold on the fence, or if not, we're about to shortly. So, I mean, 100 paintings is an amazing showing of the community coming together and, and adding some art to our city. So it looks beautiful. Um, I wanna thank, I know I said it before, but she deserves it twice. So I'm gonna say thank you again to Hunter for being such a rock star. You're the best. Vince, you are so lucky because Hunter is just like absolutely amazing. Um, I sent an email to the city manager, I believe it was last week, about a concern that we've talked about a few times in these meetings about the tower at Somerset Park and kids being able to climb out of the structure on top of the roof on the highest part of the tower. Um, I'd sent a picture of someone doing that and the city manager quickly responded to my email and I appreciate that. At this time, it doesn't sound like based on um, consulting with the um, insurance company of the city that they can fix it, but they are, the city is working with the manufacturer to get that looked at. So I just wanted to, because I copied all of you on the email, wanted to make sure that I brought that up so that you knew that it wasn't just kind of getting lost in the sauce and that um, it was being worked on. So thank you to the city manager for following up on that. And I will let you guys know when anything comes, but if you are at that park and you see anything, you know, I mean, it looks concerning so see something say something right if you if you suspect anyone's doing anything um dangerous um thank you to our citizen participant laura lessage for bringing up the five-year plan i was actually um looking at that today online and um i'm willing to work on drafting it as well 
So I agree with her that the, the current five-year plan is up this year. So if you guys um, want me to take that on, I'm willing to work on writing that. And if you guys want to start sending me ideas for things that you would like to see, I can take out things that have been done, add in new things, submit a, a, a draft for everyone to review so that we can just kind of look at that. Um, Cause the more um, input that we have, the better, right? We're gonna make a great new five-year plan. Um, I have gotten some feedback uh, from some of the vendors at the farmer's market. Um, they're uh, asking questions about the fee structure for next year's market. They're worried about the cost because they know that the, you know, it's not gonna be free like it was last year and this year. So I think that the sooner that we can get that information to the vendors so that they can prepare, um, the better. Just wanted to bring that up. And other than that, thank you so much to uh, Commissioner Cook. You're doing an, an absolutely amazing job. I thank you for your help with the farmer's market also and coming to sell the eggs and helping me with communication. And um, you're working really hard, you and Echo. And so everyone's just doing a fantastic job. So thank you to all of my fellow commissioners because you're really supportive and I think we're doing a great job on this commission. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Dana. Commissioner yeah, Sutherland. If, if I could <laughs> yeah, you know, jump in. Yeah, I want to jump in and um, respond to Dana's, um, uh, her uh, comment on the uh, Somerset Park playground equipment. We did look at that. You know, I went out, Hunter and I went out, looked at it. And Mr. Ragsdale went out a couple times, looked at it. And, you know, just to determine, you know, what we can do, uh, you know, if anything. And um, so Mr. Ragsdale reached out to the playground, you know, the, the manufacturer. And if you, you can't modify that structure, there's nothing that you can do uh, because some of the comments in that email, as I recall it, it was, um, Maybe we could put something on the outside to prevent the children from climbing. You know, in a nutshell, anything you do, it's going to void the warranty or you, you can't modify, you can't do anything to it. So we went as far as to ask if there was a manufacturer parts that they could use their own parts to modify the equipment, make it a little tougher. And we learned that there's, there's nothing um, that they can do. Uh, what Mr. Ragsdale just informed me of uh, in his continued follow-up is that there were signs that, you know, risk signs that are available from the manufacturer. So in other words, ages, so ages zero through five, and then ages six through, you know, 12, 15, what have you. So they've got these risk signs for whatever reason they weren't put out. Um, I am being told that they were told, don't put the, don't put these signs out. Now this was before my time and it was before Mr. Ragsdale's time. So I can't speak to, you know, how true that is, how accurate that is. I'm just giving you what, um, what was told to Mr. Ragsdale who related to me. So, um, we're looking to put those risk signs out because they came from the manufacturer. So in other words, there's a Todd area and then there's, a, then there's that, the, the taller adult or, or bigger kid slide or play area. So um, those signs will be put out. We'll have those put out. Um, we do have uh, and have checked, we do have proper insurance coverage um, for in the event of a mishap. Uh, but I do want to say this, you know, along with that, with this, it's like any other equipment or any, any other event, activity, anything else, it comes down to when you're dealing with children, it comes down to parental guidance. So, um, you know, these kids, if they're climbing on the outside or doing dangerous things, you know, where's the parents? You know, where's the parents to watch them? And, you know, I mean, that, that's what it really comes down to. You know, there's risk in anything. You could get hurt on a merry-go-round. Um, if you think about it as a young kid, 
you know, maybe you're trying to climb on while it's moving and you fall and you, you know, bust your mouth or something. Anything is possible when you think about it. You could cross the street and get hit. There's risk in everything. So, um, but, you know, if the manufacturer made these signs, you know, it, it is prudent to put these signs out, but it comes down to parental guidance, you know, in my opinion and in my assessment. Uh, if these children are playing on this equipment, the parents should be present or somewhere. So um, there's nothing you can do to modify that equipment. We looked at that. Um, and so the other thing is the manufacturer indicated, because there's another concern with the, um, the, the structure being tall enough where children can look into the um, property or the backyard of, of some of the you know joining homeowners um the manufacturer did say they could put a structure their structure up to where there's a sort of a blind there where it makes it tougher for the children to look over um, and again that was relayed to me by mr ragsdale so um we're looking into that as well um, but i want i say these things to say um, we did take your comments seriously. We did, you know, look into it. Uh, several months ago, we looked into it. And it was one of those things where it's just not an easy solution. It's not a, a quick answer. Yeah, let's do this. And it's done. Um, you know, but we, we did look at it and, and, you know, that's what we came back with. So signs will go up, you know, we'll carry the insurance. But I do say, you know, in this meeting um, that if, you know, children are playing on that equipment, really any equipment, um, you know, parents should be present. You know, they yeah. should be, that's really the, you know. I mean, I, I completely agree with you. I'm glad to hear that those signs will be going up. That was the last response that I had made to the city manager was, is that, would that be a possibility? So that's good to hear that the signs will be going up. There was, um, when I first noticed the situation, there was a little boy climbing on the outside. And again, the, you know, it's about two stories up at its highest point when the kids climb out there. And I did say something to the parent and she said, oh, it's okay. He does stuff like that all the time. So, I mean, I agree with you, but as far as risk and liability, you know, I just wanted to make sure and my reason for calling it out was because the most important thing here is the safety of the children. And so I just wanted to make sure that we addressed and did everything that we possibly can because, you know, unfortunately sometimes parents don't always watch their child or aren't able to watch their child every single second. Um, and that's all it takes is a split second for something to happen. So all the insurance in the world isn't gonna bring someone back if there's an accident. So I just hope that that will be enough. And to your point that parents will be careful and, and watch their children on that structure. Um, so then, you know, another thing that you had brought up was risk, you know, and that just makes me think about the recreation plan and you talking about the Delta variant. So I'll be excited to hear in September what the recreation plan is, because like with the merry-go-round or anything else, right, there's going to be risk. So I think when other cities are opening up um, their activities and we are not, that we also need to be weighing that risk in there and not having everything be completely shuttered and stopped. Yeah, and that again is, um, you know, as you monitor and things unfold and, you know, you can't predict what will happen. Um, you know, you're, you're going as you go. And yeah. so, um, you know, I once again also welcome, you're the advisory board, you know, we work together. And I am definitely interested in your ideas. If you have ideas or activities that you want to see go in that plan, then I welcome those. You know, I want to hear, you know, what you think the activities will be. I mean, that's in my mind, that's why you're here. So, um, you know, it's not for me to sit here and come up with, with all the activities by myself. Um, I've got an advisory board and a commission in you. And I look for those ideas. If you want to see some activities, you know, let me know what they are. And, um, you know, I weigh those and, and we'll see how, how this all goes in the plan. Thank you. You're welcome.
Um, I right. just have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Like, uh, okay, my thing is, is like, I've been a volunteer and I wanted to put the ha Halloween stroll on. And for more to go through, when I first talked to um, Vincent about this, he told me the only thing I had to do was draw up a map stating where everything was going to be. And then next I get this email of the 10 steps I have to do to, you know, to put this on and know things that I don't know right off the, you know, top of my head. I don't know how many people are going to participate. I'm still going around collecting things or I don't know how many kids are exactly going to show up because I can't, I don't have control over that. So I mean, saying it's, it's hard. You're asking people to volunteer and throw ideas out there, but then it seems like the ideas kind of get shut down or make it impossible to do or really hard to do. Is that, I mean, is that the feeling of other people? I think that's yeah, okay. Yeah, if I can, you know, answer that. Um, the, you know, as far as that is concerned, I, I had responded to that email, you know, that I had sent out as far as uh, what is needed. So the first thing we do, and let me just say, when we do things, we want to do things properly and in order. You know, I can't just say, yeah, let's do it. And I haven't properly checked. So we checked with building, we checked with engineering. And so building and engineering says you need a temporary usage permit. You know, if they say that, I can't ignore that and say, you know, well, I'll just let you do it anyway. No, I understand that. That's fine. I have no problem with filling out the form. Right. But yeah. why do I right. have to go to the health department to pass out candy? No, yeah. I said that the, the Macomb County, um, and I talked to the, you know, the building person about this, and, you know, he indicated that, you know, Macomb County should um, give you the okay, you know, the permit, or possibly come out and inspect, because it's food. You're passing out food or food is being passed out. And if a child gets sick or eats something that, you know, and it wasn't inspected. So this is what, this is the information coming to me. And I work in concert with them. You know, we're administration. We want to do things properly. We want to do it in order. The email that I sent you, Chris, um, it said that, you know, be as specific as you can. I mean, certainly you're not going to know, oh, well, it's going to be exactly 410 children. Um, no, you're not going to, you already said 400, you know, because it was 50 children an hour over, you know, you know, on a half hour increments over the four hours. So, you know, what I would have looked for in your response or in the letter is just, you know, we plan to have four children, 50, pretty much everything you said. Um, we're not looking for an exact specific number of 410 people came and you said 400, you know, we were just looking for you to describe exactly what's going on. And then it's presented to the city manager, the building official sign off and the city manager sign off. If I recall correctly, you know, I sent the follow up email uh, because I saw the reservation or the pullback and I said, you know, just put that in the, just put in your letter, just put what you're doing, you know, put everything in there. And I told you in that letter, I see no problem that the city manager wouldn't approve it. In that email, I told you that, so just send the letter. I don't see a problem with it. And it shouldn't take, it shouldn't take that long, you know, to get that information together, in my opinion. Um, you already knew, you know, what you had going. The big thing was the map because they said they wanted, you know, that was zoning. They wanted to understand how far apart these, you know, booths were, how far apart from the path, that sort of thing. They all didn't need uh, temporary usage permits. It was, it would have just been the one that you would have applied for that would have covered everybody. Did, is so, it to do this outside? I'm sorry, is it, is it to do this outside? We need a temporary yes, usage it was, permit? It was going to be around usage. the track at McKinley Park. And the tents were going to set up on the pathway, spaced out, depending on how many participants we had, so that it would go all around the track. So the kids would just come in one way, walk the track, come out the other way, exit to their vehicle, go home. Next group of kids would come in and just go from there. Because we did a trunk or treat last year on Park Lane. And there was, there was none of this talk of permits or 
where was leading where to was, anything from the I, health department where was trunk lane uh is that you park know, lane uh, is park lane is right oh, by you did a park lane and yeah, park, park lane you know i can't speak to last year you know i wasn't here <laughs> but um you know i can just talk about what we're you know what i found out and what you know we were told and passing it on to you that's would there what, be any way that you could send us those documents vince that show that would there be any way that you could send us the documents that show that there would be a requirement from the health department to I pass out the, candy yeah i sent the um i sent the ordinance to chris cook i sent it so to it's her, a, the ordinance so a, for the the okay. permit as far as the um you didn't say anything the, about a health department as far as the health as far as the health department you know, I encourage you to follow up to follow up with building on that. Follow up with building. That's what I'm told. So um, follow up with them, and um, I can give you their number or their correspondence if you need that. But the idea is not to, you know, make it tough as much as it is we're following protocol and procedures. I'm going by. I'm working with my building. I'm working with zoning. I can't ignore them. For when they tell me something like that, I can't just disregard it. So um, we're working together, and it's to me, in my opinion, it's not that hard, and we got plenty of time. So I'm a little surprised that you know it's being shuttered. There's plenty of time to do this. It's just a letter, and you know Macomb County. You know it, how hard is that? They're up the street. So, but if you need more info, I encourage you come in, talk to building. And, um, you know, if you need more information than what I gave you. Well, in the mean, I mean, I, so I just, me personally, you know, as part of, right, advising on, on functions such as this, if you could send us any type of the advi advice or guidance that you've received so that we could have those documents. And then I would be happy to help you, Chris, and research some of these ordinances that are, in place so that we can see where that actually originates. But Vince, if you could send us the guidance that you've received, that would be really helpful. Yeah, I sent the ordinance to Chris, but I'll also send it to the Recreation Commission. I'll do that tomorrow. Is that the ordinance or the guidance that you've received from individuals? It's the ordinance. You know, okay. The ordinance, ordinance of 32, the section 32, 250 slash 250 is one of the ordinances that he sent to me. I'll send that to you tomorrow. Yeah, any any ordinances or guidance that you have received, if you could send that to us, that would be really appreciated. Sure, I can send it to you. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Winnewicki. Yeah, just just to tailgate on to, to what Vince is saying and, and also hopefully respond a little bit to what Dana uh, stated about you know, last year there was this event or maybe in previous years there were these events or whatever. You have to understand that there were a lot of things in the past that were not done appropriately or up to code or up to ordinance or up to regulations. And that's something that we are moving forward as, as a city. We are moving forward to, under, to, to make sure that we do things appropriately up to code, up to ordinance, up to regulations, so that it would prevent the city from enduring additional lawsuits. And yeah, that's, I mean, and that's I, something that we've been working very, very hard at doing is that we are going to be doing things appropriately. And there were many, many things that were done in the past that were done inappropriately or without approvals and without ordinances, without, you know, you talked about the raffle. I'm glad that you guys finally have your license now to move forward with that raffle. Legally. Well, we were told we didn't need a license for the raffle now. I'll, 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 I'll refer, defer that to Vince, but okay. in all the, uh, 501c3s that I've been involved with, all charitable organizations that run a raffle of that nature typically have to um, get a license, but I'll, I'll defer that back to Vince and Hunter. Because right, the city is not a 501c3. Mm -hmm. So again, moving Sorry, forward, that's where we're, we're yeah, going to be doing. 
Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. You, you said technically. Go ahead. Technically, you, you need a license for a RAF. You know, technically, you need a license, and that you know, we checked into that. You need a you need a license for that to do that, and um, you know, you need a you you needed a local permit for these food trucks. You know, so things have been allowed, and you know, we're building this thing. You know, I've been here since March, and you don't change things you know, instantaneously with the snap of your fingers. And so when we started this farmer's market and, you know, food trucks are coming out and stuff, we didn't even have a local permit. And I allow the, what is it, the taco truck to operate, you know, with the state permit, you know, and technically you need a, you need a local permit or if those trucks are operating locally, you, you, sh you can share that permit. But there are things, Mr. Winnowicki is absolutely right. Um, technically, you need a license to do a raffle. You have to get a state permit for that, to do that. Um, so, then that why, so then why are we allowed to do the raffle now since we don't have that license? Who's allowing it? I was advised that you're allowing it. Who advised you of that? We can table that because I don't think that it's appropriate to bring up. Okay. But, but to, Mr. It Win, to Mr. Winnowicki's Win, point, well, is we want to do things properly. We want to do things in order. And and that's it. He said it all. He said I mean, it all. I completely agree with you. And I think that you know, that we obviously do want to do everything by the book and we want to make sure that we reduce risk. We don't want lawsuits or liability for the city. But if we're being told that there's specific guidance that you're receiving that's not in an ordinance, I think that it's important that we get that information as well. I never said, I, you know, and no one said that, you know, the ordinance or guidance that I'm giving is, <laughs> is not accurate. Or, and Chris Cook, but that's I, not what I'm saying. Okay, but I'm gonna send you that information. Perfect. Uh, we're not trying to not trying to make you jump through any hoops. What I've heard is, I've heard it said that, you know, it seems like you're getting shut down. You know, you come up with an idea and you're getting shut down. And you know, you come up with an idea. I am simply saying, here's what you're gonna need to make that happen. That's permissible. I'm not shooting it down. And, um, you know, there was information brought up about, you know, the band, you know, playing at the food truck. I'm all for it. Okay. Let's, let's do it. You know, at the food truck rally. So do you I know, need I anything that, special for that? What's that? Do I need anything special for the band? You have the, you have the uh, food truck rally. You're getting a permit for that. Temporary okay. usage permit for the food truck rally. So you have that. So you've got that area. And another reason for that is for getting that temporary usage permit when, as an example, let's say the, you know, you got have that Halloween straw and you've got these, um, you know, booths of local vendors that set up, set up and they're passing out candy, right? And you've got, 50 children coming in increments of, you know, 50 per half hour and, you know, 45 spaces in McKinley Park. Well, you have to remember that's a public park. And that's in part why you need a temporary usage permit is because you're, you're zoning, you're zoning those areas to say, hey, I'm using these areas for four hours, but that's a public park. That's why you need that permit. Because you're saying I have a right to be here. It's the city of Fraser granted me this right to, you know, have this. You know, as far as the candy, it's food. I know it's hard candy or it's just candy, but it could be contaminated. It could be something wrong with the candy. You know, I can't say the candy's gonna be all right. So I'm told that the county should approve that. What measures they take to say this candy is okay to hand out, that's up to the county. They may just, you apply and they say, we permit it. Or they may say, hey, we wanna send a person out and look at it. You know, that's if they what do I, that, 
the well, that's what I was asking, Vince. So you're saying that you are being told that, not that, that it's they, the ordinance. That, are you being told that, or is that it they, in the ordinance that they should get a they should get a permit? It's recommended they get a permit to pass, you know, a Macomb County approval permit to pass out that candy. So okay, well, I'll look tell you what, getting that information. Yeah, it, let me. I, it let sounded me. like he was advised by the building or whoever that would require exactly. Permit. So it was exactly. just an, it was, he was advised by that one. It could just be as simple as you call the health department and they're like, Right. You don't need, you know, you don't need anything or yeah, here's the permit if you just fill out this. Yeah. And if there's questions, you know, Chris, they, that you have on that, it's a quick call to that building, that building official. That's all it is. It's a phone call, you know, so, you know, we're not trying to shut things down. We do want to do things right. And I've said yeah, before, for sure. if I make an error, I want to make it on the conservative side. So yeah okay okay and um now to me my concerns okay um not yeah. getting applications for our open seat so i need to do a better job and maybe we all need to try to do uh oh hold on my internet connection was stable i was unstable for a second sorry um we need to try to um recruit or promote our our open seat so we can um we can you know have an interview and you know be a full commission um and with that i also i like to surf the web at 3 a.m when all my patients are sleeping for about 10 minutes um and i was looking at our city website and I know there's a lot of stuff going on. This is probably like low priority, but um, the website for recreation probably should be updated um, with the updated commissioners. And I mean, it still says we have an open seat. It's wrong. The date still says April. I'd like to at least get that changed so we can um, have people try to apply <laughs> so we can get a full commission. Um, other than that, I don't think I really have anything. I just think we need to keep on trucking and put. Uh, you, froze, you froze up again. Go ahead, Commissioner Cook. Sorry. Oh, sorry you just froze up again. Um, the other thing is somebody mentioned to me too about if you go to websites about some of the parks in Frazier, they all say closed by them. So maybe they should be opened. Okay. The only other besides the website, just um, we got to keep trying to. I'm still trying to get all agendas, update the minutes and agendas, maybe get the videos uploaded. I know they're on YouTube, so well, the last one was on YouTube, so we just got to keep remembering to try and get those on the website so I can refer people to those videos if they don't attend the meeting. So, <laughs> um, other than that, I don't have anything else. Um, so I guess we can move on to item number 13, adjournment. I uh, make a motion to adjourn. All right, motion made At by Commissioner Cook. Second wow, you beat by, it by three minutes. <laughs> and I'll second, so seconded by Commissioner <laughs> Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, meeting adjourned at 814. Thanks, All guys. Right, good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good night.